Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Welcome to my first video in my new Fancy Pants Studio setup. I've got new cameras, new lenses coming to you in 4K. If you're digging that, then please let me know. Hit that subscribe button down below. Hit a like and let me know in the comments what you're thinking about this new setup. All my amps, they're looking rather ridiculous in the background, but hopefully you'll dig all of the stuff i got coming up here for you and the new, new angles and new videos and stuff like that. So... Today we're going to be looking at the minor pentatonic scale played in fourths. Now it's not strictly fourths, it's a mixture of fourths and major thirds for you theory boffins out there that want to make sure that I say it right, but it's mostly fourths with a couple of major thirds in that's why tend to call it fourth. So practicing the minor pentatonic scale this way is a great exercise for your fingers to get used to playing notes that are in the same fret on adjacent strings, okay? Especially making sure that you don't let the two notes ring together. I'm going to talk a bit about this rolling technique, the way you roll your finger from one string onto the next string, muting the string that it was on before. It's a really, really great technique, and it's a pretty hip sounding kind of technique as well that uh, once you get used to it and it's under your fingers, you find that you the note choices that you use in the minor pentatonic are likely to be a little bit different than before just because for most of us playing these notes directly underneath each other or above each other, kind of thinking physically there, um, it's a little bit well, not harder, but it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't happen as naturally unless you've practiced it. And this is the best exercise for practicing it on. So let's get to a close up and I'll show you how to do it. This is a seriously cool pentatonic exercise. Definitely one that I would recommend that you get under your fingers. So we're playing the A minor pentatonic. So first finger is in the fifth fret. The big deal with this exercise is the way our fingers have to roll from one string onto the next string without the two notes ringing out together. So what we don't want is this kind of, where you just put your fingers down flat and let the two notes ring together. We want to keep them separated. So first finger is going to start just in a regular position in the fifth fret of the thicker string. The next note that we want to play in the sequence is here, the fifth fret of the fifth string. Now, especially if you're going to play it with any kind of fluidity or any speed, lifting up your finger and moving it down onto the next string just isn't going to work. So we have to develop this technique, this rolling technique, where the first finger is going to roll over, be a little flatter than it might normally be, but really importantly, the tip of the finger has rolled up just enough that it's actually muting the thicker string. Okay, so it's still in contact, it's not rolled off altogether because that allows that thicker string might ring out accidentally. Especially, you know, there's a lot of uh, this kind of motion going on, it'd be very easy for one of those strings to ring out accidentally. So you want to first of all just really slowly put the first finger down and then roll it down, just flatten it a little bit and try and concentrate on the tip of the first finger, lifting off the uh, remaining in contact but not pressing down on the thicker string. Okay, so if I'm playing the thicker string now, it's just a dead note. So there's the thicker string, there's the fifth, the fifth string ringing out, the thicker string is muted. Now when I roll it back, the fifth string is now muted and I've got the note on the sixth string. So you want this first finger to be able to kind of move like that, to be able to play those two notes. I'm not doing any other muting with the, the picking hand. This is kind of the hardest string to do it on, to be honest. So if you can get it down on this string, then uh, you'll find the others a little easier. Okay, what you want to be aware of, a couple of things, don't do this and pull the string down and bend it out of tune. Even if, you, if you're here and you go like that, you bend it out of tune too much. So you want to try and keep the strings roughly in the same place. They may move a little bit, especially if you play a bit faster. It's not something to go completely nuts about. Okay, I thought this bird's eye view might be useful for you as well, just so you can check out the way that the string gets released from the top here. When the first finger is pressing down on the fifth string, when it rolls down onto the fourth string, the finger's rolling flat and then the, the fifth string is just released enough. It's still staying in contact with the first finger there. It's just lifting up. So it's pressed down. There it is. It's lifting up, but it's staying in contact with the first finger all the time because at this point it's now muted. Now we're playing it and that fourth string under, underneath is touched by the first finger and that's muted as well. So it's a really good way for that you can see there the the way the string is just lifting up but staying in contact. And it's exactly the same thing with the third finger. There it is on the tip and when it rolls down onto the next string, it's just releasing the string enough. You can see it just lifts up and it's still staying in contact with the finger and therefore that string will be muted. So we're going to start there. First finger, fifth fret of the thicker string. It rolls over and we play fifth fret of the fifth string. 
then little finger will play the 8th fret of the thicker string and then 3rd finger will play 7th fret of the 5th string. So this interval, this is a perfect 4th and this is a major 3rd. So it's, even though I often call this exercise playing in 4ths, it does have some major 3rds in it as well. Okay, so we play that, that, now we're back to rolling. So 1st finger and then rolling it down onto the 4th string. Okay, so making sure that you see that that fifth string is muted. I'm playing the fifth string now, it's not ringing out. Again, just a little bit of practice on that kind of thing is a good, you know, really good exercise. Just rocks backwards and forwards. Okay, now we're going to do the same motion there with the third finger. So third finger goes down regular and then rolls down, making sure that that tip just lifts up. Again, a little bit of practice just on those two notes would be a good thing. Try and get it so it feels kind of easy. Most of these things, they'll feel really awkward and uncomfortable, and if you keep practicing them, they'll start to become, your fingers will kind of find the way to do it. So that's one of the things that you want to be working on, not just practicing it, but thinking about it and doing it over and over again, trying to find the place where that kind of motion becomes easy for your fingers to do. Okay, so now we've got this so far. Same thing again on the fourth string, third string. So again, first finger's just rolled over. Third finger, same thing, first finger. Same motion again. This here, now we've got the seventh fret on the third string to the eighth fret, so there's no roll involved on there. Then first finger, roll again, little finger. A lot of people find the little finger the hardest one. I do, particularly in a second as we start doing this. It's a little bit more hand motion than I have to use for my other fingers, but that might just be my little fingers a bit weird. So I'd recommend that you just practice this going up before you try going up and down, okay? Nice and slowly. Much more important to get it right and be thinking about your technique, the rolling, than it would be to try and do it too fast. Okay, little finger, you can see there again, how hands moving there, that's not ideal. You should try and make the same motion like the third finger where, it, where it's kind of that knuckle that gets involved, but it doesn't work for me with my little finger. So again. So when we come down, we do exactly the reverse of this. But one thing to note is that when you're playing the thinner of the two strings, you have to put your finger down a little flatter than you might normally. So if that was your normally your little finger placement, if we know we're going to roll onto the second string, we kind of can't do it from there, okay? So the finger has to go down a little flatter. The tip of the finger will be touching the string that it's going to roll onto, and then it rolls over. Same for the first finger here now. Instead of it being like this, like right on the north, like I can't even roll onto it from there. So I want a little flatter so that the tip of the finger is touching that string. This one, there's no rolling. Again here, it's a little flatter. It's not like this where I might normally play. It's a little flatter and then rolls over. Flatter, roll over. Flat, roll. Flat, roll. Flat, roll. Flat, roll. Spend a little bit of time just doing the descending version now. Thinking about the placement here, flat onto the tip, flat onto the tip. Okay, when you got that ready, have a little chat about picking now. So I would recommend that you start off by playing down, up, as you're ascending this little sequence. Down, up, down, up, down, up. And then return again with another down pick on that top note. And then up on the second string. Down, up, down, up. It's also worth starting with an up pick. Once you're fluent with that, I'd recommend having a go at starting with an up pick. So down, then up, down, up, down, up, down, etc. Now, what's happening here is 
a mixture of a thing called inside and outside picking. Now, if I just pick these two notes on the middle string, I'm going to play the fifth fret, so the notes C and G. But if I start with a, say, a down pick here, and then an up pick on the next string, okay, you can see that from that pair of strings, those two strings here, I'm playing down and up. I'm playing from the outside of that pair of strings, okay? If I started with an up pick on the same two notes and then down pick on the third string, you see, imagine that pair of strings are now playing from the inside both times because that up pick is starting there in between them and the down pick is also starting in between them, okay? If I start with a down here and an up, we're coming at the strings from the outside of the pair each time. Okay, this is called outside picking, this is called inside picking. Now what you're likely to find is one feels easier to you than the other. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you're over on YouTube, remember there'll be a link in the description to take you to the web page for this lesson support where you can find a PDF download. A tab for this exercise might be really handy. If you're already on my website, you'll find it underneath the Google ad there in the right hand column uh, if you're on a desktop computer or down below if you are on a mobile device. So I'd love to know what you're thinking about this 4K video idea because it takes up a lot of disk space. It's a lot more time consuming to import everything and edit and rendering and all that stuff's a lot more hassle but I kind of I'm hoping it's going to be worth it it certainly looks a lot better to my eyes uh, and hopefully you'll find that things are looking a little bit crisper and a little bit nicer now uh, we'll do a video about the setup of this as well but this is the first one it's kind of like a little test for me to see if I see how it's all going to work out uh, I've done a few test clips of course to try and get all of these bits together but this is the first proper video where I'm going to try and piece it all together so uh, look I'm really hoping that you're digging it and like I said please hit that subscribe button I really appreciate your support and I'll see you for plenty more lessons in 4k maybe very soon you take care of yourselves bye bye